Why do black folks love macaroni and cheese? Macaroni and cheese is one of the recipes that shaped American food culture. It has a rich history that dates all the way back to ancient Greece, but it's within the African-American community where it's found a special status. Well, if you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at WellMikeHistory.com. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee, Patreon page in the description below. Give us five thoughts on Apple Podcasts and support the YouTube channel. But without further ado, let's get started. Macaroni is a dried molded pasta traditionally made from wheat flour and water. This origins back to ancient Greece. The term macaroni comes from the Greek word for maker, meaning blessed. The pasta became an integral part of the Mediterranean diet and subsequently permeated its way through Greek, Roman and Arabic cultures. However, the inclusion of cheese into the equation did not come into the existence much later in Europe. First known recipes for a macaroni and pasta type dish was de lesanes, which required layering sheets of pasta with cheese and spices. It can be found in one of the oldest middle age cookbooks called the form of curry, which was compiled by cooks of England's King Richard II in the 14th century. However, a more recognizable form of the dish originated in Italy, where certain types of pastas and cheese and a casserole were documented all the way back to the 13th century Italian cookbook called the Liber de Coina. But macaroni and cheese as we know it, was introduced to the Americas by Thomas Jefferson. But he didn't cook the dish himself. During his tenure as an envoy in France, Thomas Jefferson enjoyed a similar type pasta dish in France, and he commissioned his enslaved black cook by the name of James Hemings to learn how to make it. James Hemings was the older brother of Sally Hemings, who was also the half-brother of Jefferson's deceased wife. In 1784, when Hemings was just 19 years old, he traveled with Jefferson and his daughter to Paris. In Paris, James trained under different French chefs. Over the next five years, he became a master of French cooking and got particularly good at cooking macaroni pie. This was a creamy pasta dish that eventually turned into what we know as macaroni and cheese. The recipe involved using whatever cheese he had on hand, layering it in between buttered macaroni mixed with milk. He would then cook it in a Dutch oven, which he placed over a fireplace and hot coals would be placed over the lid to bake the macaroni and cheese. Even though Hemings' crucial contribution to cooking and he was famous as a chef, he remained relatively unknown. This was because he was still enslaved under Thomas Jefferson until 1796, and he was one of only two slaves that Jefferson set free, and that was only under the condition that Chains would teach his younger brother, Peter, to take over in his place as Jefferson's cook of the household. Peter Hemings would then serve the dish at a state dinner in 1802, making it famous. Unfortunately for James, he would pass away at 36 in 1801, but Hemings' most important impact on American food culture was his introduction, macaroni and cheese. Adrian Miller, who is the author of Black Smoke, African Americans in the United States of Barbecue, explains about Hemings that his story is a metaphor for African American cooking and our experience in this country. It's the story of innovation and virtuosity. Often African American cooks get overlooked for our contributions and our accomplishments. In the early 19th century, the dish we call macaroni and cheese was primarily a food of the elite. This was because dried macaroni was not commonly accessible and Americans didn't know how to make good quality pasta. In addition to this, Italian cheeses, which was a key ingredient in macaroni and cheese, was too expensive for most Americans. As the century progressed, the Industrial Revolution dramatically changed the accessibility and the popularity of mac and cheese in the United States. The production process in making macaroni and cheese became more affordable and more widely available, it made it more popular with the lower classes. The establishment of the first cheese factories in this country amplified the production of cheddar cheese, which soon became the common ingredient in macaroni and cheese, thus making the meal even more suitable for poor communities. It was during this time we also see macaroni and cheese lose its Italian and French origins and become a more crucial part of Western cooking. For the African-American community, 
after emancipation, the dish bore two distinct identities and varied in significance. One was a quick side dish for weekdays, and the other was a more elaborate meal celebrated for Sunday suppers. It was during this time period that macaroni and cheese evolved in the South among African-American communities and became what we know as baked macaroni and cheese. This dish was also based in hard times when the black community desired to dress up their macaroni and cheese, thus began a tradition of baking layers of macaroni and cheese. During the Great Migration, where African Americans moved from the South to Northern industrial centers, this continued to spread in the popularity of macaroni and cheese, thus making it a well-known dish within the black community across the United States. Additionally, it was black women first the enslaved, then later domestic workers that were instrumental in the dish's trajectory. Their cooking skills and knowledge greatly impacted how this dish had evolved, reinforcing the role of black women in shaping American cuisine. With macaroni and cheese becoming a common dish among black families, it began to reflect the craft and ingenuity of these black women. Its importance within the culture was so high that sometimes a family member's approval was needed before it could be cooked for special occasions. In 1918, there was a Swiss invention that changed the food industry forever. It was processed cheese. Over the years, this innovation led to products we recognize even today, such as Kraft Singles, Easy Cheese, powdered sauce that comes in the mac and cheese box, and of course, Velveeta. This is when macaroni and cheese really took off. In 1937, Kraft launched its boxed macaroni and cheese. It was a cost-effective meal choice in one simple box. Priced at only 19 cents, it could feed a family of four. Consumers responded strongly to the reliable, affordable meal option, and in just one year, Kraft sold 8 million boxes of boxed macaroni and cheese. During World War II, food rationing and tightened domestic spending this made Kraft box macaroni and cheese even more appreciated as a food staple. Shoppers found that they could purchase two boxes of macaroni and cheese with only one food stamp. It was during these years that boxed macaroni and cheese earned its reputation as American treasured comfort food. Macaroni and cheese became a reflection of the United States with its convenient packaging and industrialization. It was the ideal American food pasta and processed cheese it was very cheap to make it was easy to ship and store and it was very filling while african-american families did opt for this cheaper easy to make meal they didn't relinquish the tradition of preparing baked macaroni and cheese from scratch for special occasions macaroni and cheese continued to be an essential part of family gatherings and special meals in the black community particularly during the holidays such as thanksgiving and christmas it was considered more than an everyday comfort food. It was an integral part of celebratory feasts and cherished symbolic representation of the community's cohesion. While there are many ways to prepare this dish, there was a standardization of the recipe that happened in black kitchens in the 50s when it is referred to as soul mac and cheese. This consisted of macaroni, a substantial portion of cheese, butter, milk, often topped with breadcrumbs or cheese, which is baked to achieve a golden crust. During the 60s, mac and cheese became an even more integral part of the community. It was a symbol of the community's strength and unity. During this time of the civil rights movement, mac and cheese was a common dish at gatherings and meetings, and women who were referred to as movement mothers handed down coveted recipes and their techniques and mac and cheese became to symbolize more than comfort food. It stood as an emblem of community strength, unity, and resistance in the face of racial inequalities and systemic prejudices. That tradition continues today with mac and cheese still being a significant part of black cultural cuisine. Its ceremonial presence during the holidays and family gatherings and religious events it goes beyond just a hearty pasta to a cultural icon that has ingrained itself in our shared history and identity. Despite the stereotypes and stigma that continue to categorize mac and cheese as an unhealthy soul food, mac and cheese continues to evolve in black kitchens. Chefs keep adding their own twists to the classic recipe while respecting its historical importance. They continue to reinvent this comfort food and inserting their own personal touches that reflects black culinary innovation and heritage. Thank you. This has been One Mike History. I'm your host, Country Boy. 
This has been the story of Mac and Cheese. And if you like stories like this, you can find more stories like this at OneMikeHistory.com. Also, if you like to support the channel, you can do so on Buy Me Coffee and Patreon in the description below. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. And thank you so much for all my new Patreon members. Peace.